For we serve a God who has all power in his hands. And the prayers, the fervent prayers of the righteous shall avail much. I don't know about you, church family, but I just feel good for an opportunity to be in the presence of the Most High God. Oh, that's right. Give God a hand. Let him know that you appreciate him. For this is the day that he has made. However, the day that he made was way, way back then. Truth be told, he only made it in seven days. He rested one. If you give me an opportunity, I can state my, I can rest my case like this. Anybody ever worked on an assembly line? Amen. All right. So when God created the heavens and the earth, he created the sun, he created the moon, but guess what? He only did it one time. So when it says that this is the day, truth be told, it's just an assembly line that just keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. It reminds me of the Energizer Bunny, but better. I thank God. I hope you have your Bibles. Church family, I just want to give honor to God, who is the captain of my ship. And wherever he sets sails, that's where I follow. I thank God for my lovely wife. But church family, I want to, have, I want to give a very uh, important thanks. And that is to the shepherds of this house, Pastor Jason and Pastor Shelley. Can we give them a round of applause? They've done such... A marvelous job serving the Most High God. We have an opportunity to worship, y'all. We have an opportunity to hear from the Father because somebody said yes to God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity we, to worship you, O oh God, in spirit and in truth. We come before you now, God taking down our fleshly bodies, putting on the body of Christ. We need you always, God. I pray, oh God, for every individual that is sitting in every seat here this evening, God, this afternoon, Lord, this morning, God. This is, these are your people, Lord. You know the situation that they're bearing, oh God. You know what's heavy on their heart, oh God. You know what they're enduring right now, God. But I ask in the mighty, majestic name of King Jesus, oh Lord, that you will come through, God, like a mighty rushing wind, oh God, to lift up every burden, oh God, to break every yoke, oh God, to make change, oh God, where there was no change, God, to open doors, oh God, where there was no doors, oh God, to lift windows, oh God, where there was no windows, oh Lord, only for they can receive a breakthrough, oh God. And we need you this day. In Jesus Christ's holy name, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Church family, uh, First Chronicles 16 and 27. If you have your Bibles, uh, pardon mine. I, I grew up, God trained me up on the King James Version. And so that's just, that's just where I like to go. So just bear with me if you don't mind. I'm going to uh, break everything down and, and, and explain to you how God explained it to, to me if you don't mind. Is that all right? Amen. So 1 Chronicles 16, 27, it says, glory and honor are in his presence. Strength and gladness are in his place. Glory and honor my Lord, are in his presence, glory and honor. Strength and gladness are in his place. You know, church, I think about what God is doing in all of our lives. And as God has allowed me the opportunity to share with you something that I believe we all can partake and appreciate. And that is that all glory and honor belongs to him. Would you agree? Yes. Amen, amen, amen. 
But, but how, uh, how peculiar it is that in Genesis, God says, let us create man in our image. How, 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 how unique that truly is. Did you know, and I, I know you're some scholars, but I'm just saying, God created you in heaven, and then he formed you out of the dust. Did you know? My God. But yet, God says in 1 Chronicles, it says 26, 27, honor and glory, strength and gladness is all in his presence, all in his place. Now this word honor, a couple of things comes up, value, esteem, respect. Would you agree? Amen, amen, amen. And so if you agree with what Genesis says in the beginning, God created us. And then later down in time, he formed man out of the dust. Then would you, what I would like to submit that you all, including myself, we have a likeness in God. Would you agree? Amen. Amen. All right. Therefore, if we have a likeness in God, then, then we also have a certain value from God. Would you agree? Amen. Amen. All right. But something happened, you all. Oh, that's right. We all had to come out of eternity and travel in the spirit to manifest in time. However, God has called you and I to have a type of dominion. For Adam himself worked a work that God has worked in him. God planted him in the eastward of the Garden of Eden. Would you agree? Amen. And he told him to, how should we say it, uh, dress the garden and keep the garden. And when he said that, that word dress means to cultivate. It means to work or till. But then when you look at the word keep, it means to protect. Now, any planters, any gardeners in the house? Amen. You like your tomatoes and maybe some cabbage? Okay, Brother Randy, yes, sir. And then we have some, some let's see here. Uh, what, what's that? Okay, I thought somebody said something. We got some peppers. Come on, somebody. All right, cucumbers, tomatoes, right? So picture you starting out uh, 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 one of uh, your favorite vegetables, and you have to start it inside of a pot. Now, quite naturally, that vegetable is going to grow if you give it what it needs. Would you agree? Amen. And so what it, can, what it needs is sun, water, and time. Would you agree? Amen. Amen. And then sometimes some people like to put some miracle grow in it to help speed up the process. Uh, but, but what God blessed me is, what he blessed me with is that the, the, if you give it time, that vegetable is going to outgrow the pot. Amen. So when you look at God planting Adam in the garden, it says that that is nothing but a fenced-in area where he wants Adam to overtake. But something happened, you all. Adam had an, ex he had an encounter. Not with, not with the Most High, but the one low of all lows. The one bad is all bad. The one that can get you and I in a position where we no longer think good is good, but we think bad is good. They call him old slothful or old slothful. 
Uh, they call him a serpent. The Bible speaks of him as the name Satan and or Lucifer. It says that Lucifer fell from heaven because he tried to overthrow the kingdom of God simply because he was, in my opinion, he was just flat out jealous. But he was jealous because he had an opportunity like Adam to overtake, to have some dominion. And in doing so, he says, you know what? I kind of like what I'm experiencing. Then he gets some more knowledge. Now, you know, God says that we are not lean not on our own knowledge, but in all our ways acknowledge him and lean unto him for good understanding. But oh, slothful man, he, he just wanted to go and take God and try to take him on. But he got, he got listen, y'all, it was like an ax to the tree and he got kicked out of heaven by Michael himself. And so Adam experienced something called a fall. But Adam was blessed with a wife. But before that fall came, church family, before that fall came, Adam was doing his thing. Oh, that's right. He was representing the kingdom of God. He was about his father's business. He was dressed in the garden and he was keeping the garden. He was tilling the ground and he was protecting the ground. In other words, God gave him a type of estate. He gave him some property. And in that, he had to work the ground. Can we say work? Man can't eat unless he work. Would you agree? Amen. And so in that work, it was like this is the business that God has given Adam stewardship over. And so he had a sense of pride or he had a sense of respect. But sometimes in business, church family, can I be honest? You, you know I'm going to be honest, right? So sometimes in business, we, go, we have these conflicts, right? We got coworkers who don't want to work well. We got supervisors who want to give us a hard time. Why? Because we're allowing our God to shine? Uh, what is it that we have such a troubling time? Well, church family, Adam had a troubling experience. Old Sloughful got to his wife and said, surely you won't die if you eat from that tree, the knowledge of good and evil. Miss Eve says, did, do, does anybody know their last name? I, I don't know. But anyway, Miss Eve says, uh, uh, God said we can't eat that fruit. Hey, oh, sloth of the serpent says, oh, no, you, you, you can. Matter of fact, you'll be just like God. But how is it you'll be just like God when God said in the beginning, let us create man in our image? So church family, we all have come through time just like Adam. We all have fallen short of the glory at some point in time just like Adam. Uh, I don't see no stones out there, so ain't nobody perfect in here, right? Because I know I'm not. Amen. All right, I got some hands. Praise God. So, so I don't have to feel bad about my shortcomings that was in my past, correct? Because it ain't about my past. It's about what God has for me in my present and into my future. So church family, could it be that the only reason why we're only experiencing these troubling times is because the enemy don't want us to see clearly, but he want us to walk blind. See, church family, I got something that God put on my heart. And if you don't mind, I would like to take it apart. Church family, this is the day that the Most High has given you and I another opportunity to represent the kingdom of God. And I don't know about you, but I'm not going to allow some serpent out of hell to take the heaven out of me. Church family, do I have a witness in here that you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus? If God be for you, Uwe, who can be against you? 
God has something to say. So church family, First Chronicles 16 and 27. Honor and glory in his presence. Strength and gladness in his place. May I submit, stay in his place. Stay in his presence. So we can be reminded of the value that he has poured into us before we manifested on planet earth. Because you're special. Because you're peculiar. Because you have something special on the inside. Can you pass me my phone, please? Church family, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy uh, 5 and 16, it says, <laughs> it says, honor thy father and thy mother as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee that thy days may be prolonged and that it may go well with thee. Amen. Now, this word, honor shows up again. Any parents in the house? Amen. Oh, man, check y'all out. Looking good. Come on, somebody. Uh, God says to us children, children, honor your father. Honor your mother so that our days will go well our days will be long God gave he, he gave me a revelation he, he said he said Sean well also means smooth uh, so young lads children of the faith kiddos in the kingdom do me a favor. Whatever your parents ask you to do, just do me this one favor. Just follow through so that your days will go smooth. And as you honor them, what you're telling them is that you respect them. Parents, would you agree? Amen. Amen. It's something about the honor. It's something about valuing those who provide for you. You see, uh, in Revelation, it talks about the beasts and the uh, elders honoring the Lord, taking down their crowns and worshiping him. Because why? He created the heavens and he created the earth. So they understand their position that is holy, holy, holy. They understand where their help come from. So church family, I was like, God, I need something to speak from. I, I, I get what you're saying, Lord. But how, how can I put this as some type of title, Lord? You know I like to speak from a topic. He said, Sean, he says, speak from this thought. If we carry him, then we carry honor. So church family, is everybody saved? Everybody? Okay. Now, I only saw half the hands go up, so that, that, that makes me feel like I got to pray hard and preach harder. Am I right about it? Okay, I don't know. I, I'm not just, I'm, I don't mind now. I don't mind. Because this brother right here is on fire for God. And when the word of God goes forth, oh, it's going to cut through bone, but it's going to heal that pain. So church family, if we are carrying the presence of God, then we also are carrying honor. God, Jesus, 
King of kings, Lord of lords. He is our ultimate guardian. Would you agree? Amen. Parents, you have an opportunity to be stewards over God's children when you have children being in partnership with the Most High God, allowing God's people to continue to be reproduced. So that's the big job. Trust me, I know I have a mom. We all got a mom, y'all. We all have a dad. Church family, God did something special. But in doing so as parents, providing for them. Kids, this is the, see, I got a couple of things about this. When it comes to parents being our guardians, this is why we should respect them. This is why we should honor them. And truth be told, I only got three things. I'm going to move on from this. But it says that, one, they're keeping a roof over your head. That's why we should respect our parents. We ain't paying no bills. We don't know how that feel. They working hard day in and day out. And don't let them be divorced. They got to work two jobs and pray to God double time. God, can you help me feed my kids? Because they both can eat like some horses. God, can you help me provide for them? Because every, it seemed like every year they want new shoes, but I was just, I couldn't understand because I was so tired, Lord. But their feet grow every year. So children of the faith, I just want to submit, if you respect your parents just a little bit more, if, you, if they say, take out the trash, okay. If they say, uh, do me a favor, clean the dishes, yes, ma'am. Don't hesitate to show them you appreciate them. Don't hesitate to show them you value them. Don't hesitate to honor them. Now, church family, there's something else about this because parenthood reminds me of, of, of leadership. Now, when it comes to uh, those who have a job, the Bible talks about uh, honor those who rule over you. Now, this word rule is not a cruel thing. It just sounds like it because of the New King James. Now, rule simply says that it's like a guardian giving us an opportunity to do something good for ourselves. Rule as in providing a space for us to operate in, yet serving at the same time. And so anybody, uh, let me see here. Now shout out to the, the, the Culver's that just came out here, the restaurant, anybody like Culver's? The, the, the butter, burger, burbers? Okay, <laughs> I said that wrong, y'all. But uh, shout out to, to the Culver's, right? Now it's interesting, uh, let's see here. There are some founders, Craig Culver and Lee, Cover, right? And so they, they are known for their fresh butter burgers and fresh frozen custards. All right? But with this, they had a vision. Everybody say vision. vision. Amen. So parents, kiddos of the faith, it's one thing which is good to honor your mother and father, which is respect. But people of the faith, when people rule over us, as in uh, has a, a type of leadership, as in giving you an opportunity to earn an income for your family, it says we have to honor the vision. Now, don't get me wrong, every restaurant is different, but they all have something in common. I'll give you two more after this, but hold it one sec. But this vision for uh, Craig... Uh, Culver and Lee Culver, they came together. It was a tag team duo in business, you all. And they had a vision for fresh butter burgers. Can y'all say that five times fast? My God, fresh butter burgers. Oh, Lord, I'm sorry, y'all. And fresh frozen custards. They had a vision. And what happened was they, they, put, they put themselves in position to be able to have their first Culver's. And somebody had to help them create the vision. Amen? So church family, it's also good to honor those who rule over us. For an example, like uh, the CEO of a Culver's. And you have uh, managers, right? 
Uh, uh, you know, you got a manager, a hiring manager. You got uh, managers that, you know, may work, uh, you know, like the fast food line or a manager that may work just the back where the food is getting cooked and fresh and all that good stuff. Y'all like barbecue and, and ketchup? Anyways, uh, you know, the frozen custards. I mean, you know, you got to have somebody to help manage this. But what I like about this is something that God shared with me. Let's go to the next one. He says that, Sean, there are many restaurants that have something in common. They all have something in common, but we're just going to stick with three for the sake of time. Chick-fil-A founder, S. Truett Cathy. Now, I don't know about you all, but I, I love Chick-fil-A. My God. Polynesian sauce. Come on. We got some witnesses. Amen, somebody. Come on. South Truett Cathy was the founder and chairman of Chick-fil-A. He opened his tiny Atlanta diner in 1946. My God, 1946. And while he was famous for creating the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich, Truett was also known for his servant leadership and great generosity. I discovered something. Let's go to the next one. I discovered something, church family. I discovered something. God says, Sean, what else do you like to eat? I was like, well, I'm not going to lie to you, Lord. I like chilies. Baby back ribs. Come on, give me some of that baby back. <laughs> Chili's founder was Larry, how you say it? Levine, known for his baby back ribs. And oh, and there was a Southwestern appetizers. And is also known for casual dining. I like the um, Southwestern egg rolls, you all. My God. And you know you got bottomless chips? Come on, somebody. They come fresh and hot. Uh, okay, I do it. I, I enjoy a good meal. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, but one thing they all have in common, church family, is they like to serve food. Now God says, he says, Sean, this is a type of rulership. This is a type of domain. This is a type of business. But church family, how many of you know that rulership comes with relationships? See, when Jesus came down to earth, he was about his father's business. But he had to choose somebody to help him run his father's business. He had, he had to choose somebody like Uwe. He had to choose somebody like Randy. He had to choose somebody like Faye. He had to choose somebody like Nathan Long, he had to choose because there was 12 apostles. He says, you fishermen, if you follow me, I'll make you fishermen of men. They dropped their nets. They saw something. They heard something. Now mind you, we are created in the image of God. So it was like they recognized that this comes from God, this word. How many of you here moved here to Martinsville, but you were somewhere else? Raise a hand. My God. Okay. I wasn't ready for that. Okay. So when you came here, there was something here that reminded you of God. Would you agree? Amen, 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 amen. But like the plant being potted or being the plant being planted in a pot, what, what really what you said to God was, God, I see that you want me planted here. Now, therefore, I must be able to grow here. Because there's something special in each and every one of you. And so in order to get the fruit that God has sown into you, sometimes we might have to help people like Jesus to create the vision. Chili's need help us. Culver's need help us. Chick-fil-A need help us. And I think they're all great restaurants. Church family, I discovered that we're not the only church out here in Martinsville. But that does not mean God is not moving in these other churches. That does not mean God is not healing in these other churches. But what I have discovered is that God is, and in fact, doing something right here in Life of Love. 
So church family, you can't have rulership without relationship. Matter of fact, God showed me something else. He said, Sean, you think about what Adam did. Yes, sir. He said, think about what they provide for these three restaurants. I said, yes, sir. I said, he said, what do you all, what do they all have in common? And I was like, well, Lord, I ain't, you know, I just like take my time, like you said, Lord, you know. I said, well, seem like they have a product. Exactly. You all want to know Jesus' product? The business that he was running for the most high? It says the salvation work that we all be freed from the snare of the enemy. Uh, salvation means I'm free from these chains. I'm free from this bondage. But Jesus says to honor the Father, you got to honor me. So to get to the Father, you got to get to Jesus. And how many know that Jesus is moving in our lives? So we represent the kingdom of God. We also represent Jesus. But in doing all of that, I discovered there's two things involved. There's leadership and there's management. Now, the interesting thing, any leaders in the house? Don't be shy. Amen. Amen. Oh, man, look at y'all. Okay, come on, somebody. Oh, yes, ma'am. So, would you agree, a leader, a leader, uh, uh, let me just say it like this. Leaders lead, managers manage. Leaders lead people, managers manage product. Would you agree? Amen. So, but God gave me a revelation. I said, oh, God, you serious? He said, yes, sir. He said, there are often times that a leader can lead and manage, but sometimes it's troubling for a manager to manage and lead. But through Christ, all things are possible. So God shared with me, he said, Sean, it's just simultaneous. It's at the same time. It's simply saying that as one vessel leads, they also manage. One vessel leads the people. I used to work for Chick-fil-A, you all. Uh, let me see if I can remember her name. Miss Deidre York. York. Amen, amen, amen. Wesley Chapel, amen, amen. Shout out to uh, Chick-fil-A and Wesley Chapel. Uh, you're probably on the other side of Flat Shows right, or Wesley Chapel right about now. Uh, so they had me uh, squeezing lemons. Y'all don't want to squeeze no lemons, I'm going to tell you that right now. It's, it's fresh and it's good. But my God, you got, to, you got to push down on this, this sucker that's just turning real fast. And you're like, man, then you hit your knuckles. You're like, woo, I need to find a strategy, Lord. But you got to do that. And get, don't, don't, listen, don't be backed up on lemonade, y'all. You got eight boxes to do that. I mean, that's like three hours. And they said, pick up the pace. I'm like, my God, I'm trying to pick up my knuckles. <laughs> I'm sorry, my bad, my bad. So, so, but, but, but here it is. Uh, they give me opportunity to work, to earn, a, to earn some income, right? But the leader, they say, oh, no, 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 baby. Give me a second. Hold on. Let me show you how it's done. Then you, you know, you put one in, you turn it on, and then you hold it like this. Hold it like that. And then you just shh, turn it, go in the same motion. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. See, now you try, okay, oh, yeah, yeah. The next thing you know, they led me to operate their equipment even better. But then they, they, they kind of, they watched me a little bit. They're like, yeah, you got it, you got it. They cheer you on a little bit. Go ahead with your bad self. You, 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 look, you Mr. Squeeze it now. I said, okay. But then they also have to make sure that, you know, that machine is not burning out. They say, hey, and LaShawn, don't, don't, don't forget to wash it out because all that pulp, it'll get stuck and it, it'll be hard to clean. 
And then, you know, we ain't, we ain't trying to spend, you know, $500 for another juicer. Come on, somebody. But anyways, I said, okay, Lord. So, so there's a difference between ruler, I'm sorry, there's a difference between leadership and management. Okay. So Jesus walked with the 12 disciples. And he was managing the product of the Most High God all at the same time. Ah, the, the disciples. Peter had, Peter had questions. The, 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 the disciples. Bartholomew had questions. The disciples. One of them fell short of the glory and sold Jesus out for 30 cents, I, I recall. My God. They thought, he thought he, was, he sold Jesus, but really he sold himself. My God. Church family, we have to be very, very careful not to sell ourselves on the account of some pieces of change. Because what we're trying to do technically is not going to make any change for the good, but it's going to make a lot of change for the bad. But church family, this is why I believe guardians go across all realms. The realm of parenthood, the realm of a leader in uh, like a position of an owner of a company and also the leader of a church. You see, church, I believe Pastor Jason and Pastor Shelley is about our father's business out here in Martinsville. I believe that they prayed and they sought God like Jesus prayed and sought God. He was up on a mountain and he prayed and asked God to help me choose 12, to help me run your business. Now, church family, I've discovered, though, that sometimes if we don't really understand who we are in Christ, we may not really value the value in us. We may not really appreciate what's precious in us. And so as we continue to grow, I would like to encourage each and every one of us to stay committed to Jesus. Because if you lean, can I get a helper? My, come on, both of you, come on. Look at y'all, y'all just some good helpers. Now do me a favor. Uh, stand right here, Randy, <clears throat> and stand right there. All right, come closer for me. All right. Church family, I believe, because cause God says, don't trust man, right? That's what he say, right? Yeah, amen. Okay. He said, lean on to your own understanding. That's man, right? But, but in all your ways, acknowledge me, and I shall direct your path, right? The word says that it is a, a, a lamp unto my feet, to show me where to go. But it also says, lean on King Jesus. And there won't be any hollow spots in your body. He'll keep you in an upright position. Y'all get where I'm going? I'm going to lean back. <laughs> so in the midst of trials and tribulation, and you no longer know what to do, God says, lean. Whoo, my God. Thank you, God. You kept me, oh, a little while longer. Thank you, Lord. Now, church family, six months down the road, a situation comes up that embraces me a little bit harder. Next thing I know, I got to lean back a little bit more. He says, lean, and I'll keep you in the upright position. Not on man, but on God. Church family, two years, you're like, whoo, thank God, everything's all good. I got my peaches and my cream, life running smooth. But all of a sudden, here comes the enemy trying to attack you, trying to steer you off your yellow brick road, trying to get you off that narrow path. But this time, it's like a wind that, whoo, and you're like, Lord, that almost took me out for some reason. And God says, lean on King Jesus. But church family, I know it's tough sometimes. I know on the job it gets frustrating sometimes. I know you are doing your best sometimes. But do me a favor. Allow these words right here just to sink in a little bit deeper. If you're carrying God, 
you're carrying honor. If you're carrying God, you're carrying something precious. If you're carrying God, then you must be carrying something valuable on your inside. Because the next time you have to lean and feel like you can't get yourself up, do me a favor. Shout glory because God is keeping you in the upright position. Do me a favor. Shout glory because ain't no hollow spot in your body. Do me a favor. Shout glory because the harder you lean, the harder he's going to push you in the upright position. You're carrying God, a likeness like him. Therefore, you're also carrying honor. I'm about to say something. It really comes from God. I just have to stay obedient. Thank you so kindly. Don't dismiss your vessels. Don't allow your vessels to go under. Don't allow what the enemy is trying to cook up that sometimes it may smell good. It may look good. Anybody ever had a taste? My God. You may feel stuck. You may feel like it's woe is me. And I can't get up. You may feel like, well, I'm down here now. I might as well just stay here. Don't dismiss your vessel. You might be rocking side to side. You might be crying. You might be saying, Lord, I know you're up there. You might be like David, God, where are you? My enemies, they're just taking me left and right. Don't dismiss your vessels. When God says don't dismiss your vessels, he means don't forget you're valuable to him. When God says don't dismiss your vessels, he means there's something precious still inside of you. Don't allow the enemy to steer us, to veer us off course. Just so he can get his agenda accomplished. Because truth be told, he's the only one that him and his goons that has the right to be in hell. All he really wants is company because misery loves company. But as Jesus said in the synagogue when he was teaching at a young age and his parents came looking for him because he had guardians too, and he told his mother, oh, Mom Dukes, Pop Dukes, uh, Sorry to break it to you, but you know I'm, I'm about my father's business. Church family, I know it get hard sometimes. I know we have our weary moments sometimes. But if Jesus didn't, whew, my God, if Jesus did not expand his father's business, if, if he did not choose the twelve, then, then would we know the gospel today? If they did not go out two by two, would we, with the gospel, would have spread it like a wild fire? Jesus did something, but he told him something before he left. He said, I'm going to prepare a place. And if it wasn't so, I wouldn't tell you. He said, I'm going to come back, but do me a favor. You have some greater works to do, but I have to step aside. Church family, God wanted me to remind you that although we might be going through some rocky moments right now, there still is a leader inside of you. Church family, even though we might be going through some sad moments right now, there still is some value inside of you. Church family, even though we might be battling with the sickness and the pain, Whatever it is, God says, 
You're more valuable than many sparrows. He says that you are the head and not the tail, which says that you follow him and not them. Because what the tail would do represents you following who's in front of you. But what God says is, you're following my voice, a righteous indignation, walking by faith, not by sight. So church family, I'm here to tell you, it's all right to cry. But God told me, like the Holy Ghost told me, but we about to bounce back like rubber, baby. God told me to tell you, you're not proof. In other words, you have that cedar tree anointing. In other words, it says that you won't no longer get knotted up in the presence of God anymore. No longer you will get tangled up with the enemy. Why? Because you're steady in the presence of the Most High God. There's honor in His presence. There's value in his presence. There's freedom in his presence. Oh, come on, help me, Holy Ghost. There's gladness in his presence. Oh, I'm going through situations right now, church family. You, I know you don't know my story, but I know you see God's glory. And every time we come up in God's building, there's a smile on my face. Can I tell you why there's a smile? It's because the joy of the Lord is my strength. It's because if I got joy on the inside, can't nothing keep me down. And I don't know about you, but anybody here got God's joy on the inside? Anybody here know you're valuable? Anybody here? My God, I see some precious people of the kingdom of the most high God. You're carrying him. You're also carrying honor. God wants all of us to be reminded that only he can bring change. We all may be in some form of leadership roles, whether it's parenting, whether it's a CEO of a company or restaurant serving food, whether it's we have an opportunity to serve the kingdom of God uh, through way of church or sanctuaries, Church family, remember this. Any married folks in the house? Amen. Do me a favor as I say this. Uh, I asked God, I felt like God put this on my heart. And uh, I had to be obedient, but I also had to Continue, again, honor the guardians that gives you an opportunity to serve. Whether it's at the house, whether it's on the job, whether it's in the church, honor the guardians. In this case, in, in, in this world, we honor Pastor Jason and Pastor Shelley. Amen? We honor, the, the, what's interesting, there, the word pastor is not in the Bible. <laughs> uh, it says shepherd. It don't mean shepherds of sheep. It just, it, it's metaphors, you all. And so simply it says shepherd as in there's a flock of God's people. And God has to choose somebody to watch over their souls. And as they guard your souls... I see it like God guards their souls. But in any and every capacity of leadership, God says, Sean, we all have to seek ye first the kingdom and wait on God. So church family, I, I reached out. They got in touch. We had, to, we, had, we, we had a talk. And I just kindly and politely asked, And this is what I ask. I'm going to do it right now. Any men of God in whatever form and whatever manner I want to extend this invitation that God put on my heart. Would you like to come down to the altar 
for whatever is a rededication to God, a recommitment to God, or like we talked about those people, or if you have a vision from God, if you don't mind at, at this time, if, if there's any man of God that would like to come down, now if it, if it knocks on your soul, if it rings your doorbell, God had me preach a word one time. He said, Sean, he said, he said, he said, instead of calling the cell phone, call your soul phone. Because God knows your number, brother. Personally. He knows the number of hairs on your head. Personally. He said, before you were in your mother's womb, he knew you. Would there be another? Uh, if you feel like things not going right on the job, and you want some prayer. Okay. All right. I'm going to give you some time. I'm going to give you some time. I got a little bit of time. I got a little bit of time. All right. Amen. Amen. I was going to tell you now. I praise God for what he's doing. All right. So let me say this. Any men of God who's married, all right now, no stones in the house, right? Amen, okay, amen. Any men of God, for whatever reason, if you feel like you need to come down to the altar for prayer, okay, thank you, Holy Ghost. He says, um, he says to let you know, we are going to anoint you, and we're going to pray over you, that whatever is troubling you, in the name of Jesus, it will get right because you're standing on his righteous word and the Holy Ghost is going to come and minister to you. He says that you are valued, you are carrying honor because you're carrying him. So any husbands, any soon-to-be husbands, if you feel like things are a little shaky, you're not sure, come on down. We're going to have some anointed oil prayed over you. If you feel like you need direction, instruction, enlightenment, shandaye kolokase. My soul Lado Just give me five minutes, church. Wokanda shall I be? May your seka wokado Sholo Kasayawe Moloko Shamaye. Can I have some volunteers just in case? Wola bo kandese. Go Gande, walk with me one at a time if you don't mind, brother. Hela Jo se ma ye ke ko. Thank you, Randy. Gana wo shama ye. Wo la de kana. Mi kanda she la ka. Wo na se ma ye ko ko. Ma la to she ya we. My brother, you are the man of God. God says that there is still power and work in you to do from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. My brother, be released right now from the enemy. Break free in the name of Jesus. Yando ka shala yota se maya go shala we mo se ko shala wo me yota shala wo. All right, here we go. Here kabo shama ya ko move holy ghost in the name of Jesus. Tanda e kama ye mo se ma kabo. Ah, yeah, Kalu. 
Mi agola de la se Mana ma baya wo My God, my Father, my Holy Ghost power Strengthen my brother and God In the name of Jesus, set free, be healed, be delivered And understand what God has for you From the crown of your head to the toes of your feet Be free from God can you take your hat off for me? My brother, I see pain on your eyes, but God lift them right now in the name of Jesus. That's right, receive your blessing, receive your healing right now in the name of Jesus. Even if you got to shout, let it out in the name of Jesus. Because he's crying out, Jesus, God knows what's on your heart. He knows what you're enduring. He knows what you're facing. Lord, Tisanda shamati, mikanda lokama, jose la hushamba bisoko manamo manamo ma ushelabo yikarata. My God, man of many gifts, hella bushada, man of many talents, hola bushata. Don't hold one and forget the other, hola shikandata. Move for your Most High, move for your God. Don't forget your valuable. Ela bo shamaye malako shanda shanda di sango la telago masa bo shela bo karobo shana yokanda lokanda se mano kanda yokanda lokanda he mago se kanda ta. No more troubles for you, my brother, in the name of Jesus. Ha, ha, shukata. Walk peacefully for God. Elo kushanda la kikata. E kanamata sa. Walk kindly for God in the name of Jesus. And allow God to show you. E koloka. Not another man show you, but God show you. And when he shows you, walk out on faith. Don't allow somebody else to pull you where God wants you to be. But allow God to direct your path. Andelo shamaye, mando ka shebeye ko, wola se mayoka de, chukata kalaka. Can I ask you a question? Are you questioning this? I don't, not, not really question. I, Jesus cast a demon out of me. I don't, I don't question Jesus. Okay. I just. I don't believe that we do things for things type thing. I'm not a believer in works. Okay. All right. Good, 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 good. Uh, so what I'm about to tell you is, okay, thank you. Have you been struggling? Yeah. Okay. But do you feel like you've been struggling more times than few? I was doing great after he cast the demon out, but lately some of the stuff on the inside, like the, the stuff that he took away is... is like a familiar spirit? Yeah. Okay. Like, but he cast it out of me, so it doesn't make sense to me why I'm, I was free. Like, I didn't do anything. I don't uh, understand. I'm yeah. washed in the blood. You are washed in the blood. I'm saved. Like, I don't saved. understand why it won't leave me alone. Yeah, leave you alone. Can I, can, I, can I share something with you? Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes, when they leave, they walk amongst the earth. And it says that they walk and they experience a dry moment. They like to be in body, right? Not out of body. But when they try to come back, they like to see if the house is swept clean. You understand? And so if the house is clean, what they do is grab seven more greater than them and try to overtake. But what you're telling me <laughs> is that you are washed in the blood. And you believe in Jesus, right? Well, yeah, absolutely. Okay. But th you don't understand. That after yep. he cast that demon out the, the following night, yep. the spirit entered my room. Yeah. I hid under the cover, so I was scared. But I heard yep. a, a, a voice inside me said, you are mine. Yeah. He can't come back. So yeah. he can't come back. He can't so come back. Why? Why the struggles? I'm going to tell you. Because the body 
has this thing like a hard drive and it has a memory. And it says, sometimes these memories would, f would flash certain memories across our souls that creates a familiar spirit. And I'm about to tell you something. Watch this. Listen to me real good. And when that happens, it's not that you're, uh, it's not, that you're not free. It's not that you're not, you know, washed in the blood. It's not that you're, you, it hasn't been, you know, cast out or expelled. I'm going to tell you why. Because you just said you don't believe in what? Works. And works. Yeah. Okay. I believe faith in the blood and the resurrection. All right. But the works. Then when you say works, Kent, you got to tell me this. Bear with me, church. I didn't, bear with me. What those works means to you. Works to me is trying to be good to get right with God. Amen. All right, watch this. What's your name? Chris. Chris. Okay, Chris, I'm LaShawn. Pleasure to meet you, Chris. Nice to meet you. All right, so Chris, what's your last name? Nardi. All right, Nardi? Yeah. All right, so Chris Nardi, this is what's wrong. I'm going to tell you right here. You don't believe in works. That's what's wrong. Let's walk. Come here. So faith without works is dead, right? Y'all point your hands to brother Chris Nardi, right? All right, all right. So they praying for you. They interceding for you right now, my brother. Faith without works is dead. But guess what, bro? Faith is the only thing that can please God. All right, now listen to this. Stay right there. Just, just listen to this. All right, come here. Have my brother sit right there if you don't mind. Have him sit on the chair for me. Yes, if he's comfortable with that. All right, Nardi, come here. All right, stop. All right, now come here. All right, stop. You know what you just exercised? Faith. It's that easy, bro. All right, hold my hand. You know what you just exercised? Faith. It's that easy, bro. See, faith without works is dead. Works is putting in a good effort to go and move towards the voice of God with a righteous indignation. Can I get an amen? amen. Come on, somebody. See, they ain't going to bother you no more, my brother, because now you understand clearly from my understanding of what I'm receiving. Is that all you got to do, bro? is put forth a good effort in the direction that God is leading you. How does that sound? That sound obtainable? Sound good, but I can do everything he's written in the word. It doesn't make me saved. Only the blood and the resurrection makes me saved. It's the resurrection and the blood that put me in right standing with God. It is, however. Now faith is what produces the works. If you have faith, you're gonna do good works. Well, you're not doing good works. It's kind of like commandments. Your relationship with the commandments change. You're not doing the commandments to be right with God. You're doing the commandments because you love God. Well, do you love God? Yes, absolutely. And guess what love is? An action word. Yes. Okay. So if you love God and you act on moving towards God, then that is what you're doing, which love conquers all, right? Yeah. So that means your good efforts, acting on the goodness of God, is you producing faith. Because faith without works is dead. It says that if you show me faith and I have no works and you just have mouth, cool. But I'm going to show you faith by my works. See, it says that not by what you see, by what you hear. Hearing the word of God. Not just the word in scriptures, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That is why God says to seek him daily, the kingdom of God. Because every individual here have their own individualized purpose with their own custom glove that they can put their hands in. And when they put their hands in that pot that God called them to have dominion over, then they will thrive. You have the same thing. You just have to believe it. You have to believe it. If you believe it, you shall receive it. Hold on to that word. Come here, brother. I'm going to pray for you real quick. Shall I my coco?
Glory in the Sikato, Maseka, his healing in the Kushanda, his mind in the Kushanda, his feet in the Kushanda. May your God, may your God, may your God, Helabo, serve and live for you because you live for him. And if you be for God, he be for you. For you are overcoming through Christ Jesus. Allow God to move in you, allow God to rest, rule, and abide in you. And don't allow another thing. What's your name? Randy. Randy, I love you in Jesus' name. Randy, are you having pain? Well, I have a heart issue that I'm going to have worked on this week. Okay. Is that what you come up here for? Partially. Okay. All right, what's the other thing? Uh, you don't have to say it. You don't have to. I don't know how... Uh, you know, sometimes I don't feel like I'm, uh, I believe in God and everything like that, and okay. I'm saved and everything like that, but okay. sometimes, you know, I just to feel empty. Okay. That's, you understand that? I do. And okay. that's that, and, you know, also, also, you know, about my heart problem. <laughs> okay. Understand, understand. Sometimes pain can drain us, can drain our faith. Sometimes pain can make us feel like basically we're on our wits end and, you know, we might as well just be honest, give up. No, I don't feel like doing that. I said sometimes. Yeah. I wouldn't say anymore. Yeah. But that's even better that you don't feel like doing that. Then that tells me you're not that drained. No. All right. So we're going to pray, okay? All right. All right. Koka tala koka na toka. Yeah, there you go. Lift your hands. O shandala kikata bo shata. Lift them up if you can. Hallelujah da basha. Mi singola bo shata. In the name of Jesus, Father God, I pray right now, Father God, from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet, that every blood cell, every white cell, and every and his heart itself as the organ, oh God, that it will pump and, and work as you design it to be in the name of Jesus. Be healed, my brother, in Jesus Christ. Yeah, there you go. Speak, my brother. Speak your faith. Speak your faith. Speak your faith. Speak your faith. Thank you, Lord. To God. Thank you. Speak your faith. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There you go. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That's it. Speak your faith. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Right there. Speak your faith. Hey, God. Thank you, Lord. Hey, God. Thank you. Hey, God. Faith. All right. That's it right there. Whole kind of time. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Church family, thank you for your time and thank you for your patience. Listen, uh, may God bless you all for just enduring a little while longer. I, I'm, I'm certain, I, I promise you, I had every intention, but, uh, but I, I had to, you know, be obedient. Uh, do me a favor. Raise your right hand and say, God, God I'm carrying you. I'm carrying you. Therefore, Therefore, I'm carrying honor. Carrying honor. And, to and to every guardian, I shall honor. I shall honor. And every person, every person shall honor me. Because of the God, because of God in, me. in me. Hallelujah. Put those blessed hands together. My God. My God. My God. Church family, I love y'all so kindly. Thank you so kindly for enduring. May God bless you in a very, very special way for staying over just a little while longer. Hallelujah. At this time, you are, you, you know, you could be free to go. But if you feel like God is moving... Well, you know, you can move with God, too. Thank you.